Welcome back to our 93rd episode of the Launcher Farm Show. Round review Jordan Matchett with Royal Page in Durham Region. Jordan's also the creator of the Southern Ontario Hunting Properties Facebook group. In this episode, Jordan and I talk about why niching down in your business is so important and how to create the right marketing message to speak to your audience. Jordan also shares how he turned a small list of 12 of his friends who were interested in hunting into a massive email list which he then spun off into a super interactive and engaged online community. And we talk about what he did to grow his group and how he created value up front for his members. Jordan also shares a super easy way to turn your passion into profits by finding the right audience to get in front of and creating a community around it. And we talk about how he positioned himself as the expert and connector, which he's then used to build a truly profitable and consistent source of business for him. Plus, we talk about a ton of other ideas that you can use to grow your geographic farm. So be sure to check out this episode, like and subscribe, and enjoy the episode with Jordan. Welcome back to another episode of the Launcher Farm Show. I'm your host, Ryan Smith, and today we've got a great guest. It's Jordan Matchett with Royal Page Frank in Durham. That's uh, actually where I was in uh, the business out in that area as well. So Jordan, take a second, tell us a bit about yourself and why you're here. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, I've, uh, I've been in the real estate business 10 years now. I just celebrated my 10-year anniversary this summer. Um, like, like you said, I, I work primarily in Durham region, uh, but I've actually moved out into the more rural area towards Peterborough. Um, it's been, it's been an interesting learning curve over the last couple of years after I moved up here. Um, I think it, I kind of started before the trend, but especially during COVID, there was lots of people kind of making that move out of the suburbs, out of the city, looking for more space. Um, so it was, it was kind of something that was easy to cater to having made a similar type move. Awesome. So how you said you 10 years has been in the business. What is it that got you into the business in the first place? Yeah, it was, it was 10 years this summer. Um, before I was in real estate, I, I went to school for architecture. I have a degree in architectural design. I was working for a residential architect in Ajax, doing a lot of subdivision type work in, in Durham and some custom home stuff. Um, all of the north end of Durham that all got built up over the last 10 years, we worked on all that stuff. Wow. So it was kind of a good base of knowledge and introduction into that side of the real estate business. And I, after a few years, I just kind of felt like I was stuck in an office with not much room to grow and expand mm. and do stuff on my own. And I, I personally like to spend a little bit more time with clients and have some freedom in my job and it was, it felt like a long hill to climb in the architecture business. Sure. You could go out on your own and do some custom home stuff, but it just didn't seem like a good fit as much as I liked that kind of creative design aspect of it. Yeah. So I had some, uh, actually one of my godparents uh, was a realtor with our brokerage as well back then. Um, still is now actually, she's one of our managers. So I just kind of had a chat with her and said, look, like, this is kind of what I'm thinking. Like, I'm, I'm personable. I have a background of knowledge that I think would be useful. What do you, what do you think? And uh, I talked to her and talked to her partner and it seemed like a good fit. And uh, I, I was a little apprehensive because 10 years ago, there wasn't a ton of 24 year olds with the real <laughs> estate license. Yeah. <laughs> I would say that's, that's changed considerably over the last 10 years. It's gotten, the industry's gotten a lot younger. Yep. Uh, but I walked into an office where I was at least a decade younger than everybody else. Um, so it was, it was an interesting start. Uh, I think you get the kind of, when you first start in real estate, even today, you get your standard knock on doors, cold call. This is how you sell real estate spiel. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if it was exactly the right fit for me. It took, took some time to figure out. I didn't sell a house for the first year. Wow. so and I quit my full-time job so it was kind of it was a tough learning curve yeah um but I think once I kind of figured out how I wanted to approach the business and it, it got a lot easier and I think a big part of that was understanding niches and marketing a lot of a lot of real estate agents don't even really seem to know the difference between marketing and advertising yeah you can put an <laughs> ad in front of of whoever you want but if it doesn't speak to the market you're trying to sell it to, yep. it doesn't have a lot of impact. So I think the way that I've gone about my business since then has really kind of been shaped by marketing and understanding, understanding your buyer and understanding the niche you're trying to appeal to. So 
I think the, the Facebook group and the hunting thing was another really good lesson for me about the power of the niche and yeah. how, how relevant that can be. Yeah. I think niches is so important. And for the viewers who don't know, I used to have a podcast called the niche agent. It was about seven or eight years ago. And it's exactly what I dove into. And I was helping agents really figure out what their niches are and how to create niches. Because in my opinion, in my experience that if you can find the right niche and you can find the right audience, you can create a tremendous value for them. You can create an amazing business and you, you case in point for what you're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. You've really created a unique opportunity that benefits you, that benefits the people you're serving and yep. creates more value for everyone. So for the viewers who don't know, can you just explain kind of what it is you do and how, how you're doing it? Yeah, absolutely. So I would still say my bread and butter, so to speak, is still your typical residential resale transaction uh, in Durham and Peterborough. Um, but I had started, uh, I like to hunt. I like to spend time out in the woods, especially in the fall, which we have coming up. Um, and so just personally, I was always checking out recreational properties, acreage, looking around, seeing what was out there. And I had a couple of friends that obviously share the interest and uh, started saying like, you know, if you come across anything good, send mm -hmm. it over. And that list was a couple people for a while. And then it was 10 or 12 people. And then all of a sudden it was like 50 people. And it was, it was in big email list to manage when it really wasn't like my primary focus. It was just right. kind of like, this is what I'm looking at. And I'd get, yeah. I get emails back from people that I'd never heard of. I was like, where'd these, where'd they get this? And like, <laughs> obviously someone forwarded it on. And like, and then by the time it came back to me, I was like, I don't even remember this property. Like I, I probably found it a month ago. Yeah. So I started the Facebook group and to be honest, didn't do a whole lot with it. Oh, at the start. And I don't do it. I don't have to do a ton of marketing, even with it now it's growing pretty organically. Um, but it, it started, it was really just those 40 or 50 people from my email list that got invited to it to begin with. And then it seemed like in a few weeks, it had a couple thousand people in it. Wow. That's and, amazing. Uh, it, was, it was great. Um, it was a little overwhelming at first because I wasn't sure what to do with it. Mm. Um, like I would, if I came across something on MLS or if I heard of something that was going to get posted, I shared it there and people seemed to be interested and in just kind of organically, like people often buy those types of properties as a group too, like as a hunt camp. Right. right. So it's Mike and his brother and their cousin and their uncle. So it really worked well that way because one person in the group would see it and they tag those other three people. Right. And all of a sudden you get three more applications to the group. So it, it grew pretty much every time I posted a property, it seemed to seem to have a burst of, That's of growth. Awesome. And I ran a few ads just kind of trying to figure, figure out how it was working. And really all I did was post to the group, a property. And then through the real estate, my, my personal real estate page, I would run ads that had the, the group name tagged in the ad. Yep. So that people would see the ad, they'd see the property, they click on the group name. And then all of a sudden they were there. So those were super effective and like based compared to like your typical real estate Facebook ad, the cost per click was insanely low. I don't, yeah. I don't remember what it was, but it was like, it was, it was really easy. And I really only ran those for maybe a month and it, it kind of, the group got over, over two or 3000 people. And then wow. I just kind of, I turned it off and then just that organic growth. Once we had that many people in it, every time I posted, it just kept growing. And I think, I think we're almost at 10,000 people now. That's amazing. Yeah. So, and like, like everybody else, I had, I've tried like the neighborhood Facebook pages. Like I, I have a couple, I still have them. Yep. Um, but I, it, it's hard to really connect to those groups unless you're really active and really working that farm area or niche. Yep. And I think the thing with the hunting thing was it's something that people are so interested in. It's, it's a passion for a lot of people yeah. that people were actively seeking it out. And I think a challenge for a lot of people with that type of property is they don't tend to be big dollar properties, right. especially if they're vacant land, yep. they can be anywhere. Like people will call and say like, look, I'm looking for a hunt camp within three hours of Toronto. That's a big circle. <laughs> yeah. So like, I'm not driving three hours west of Toronto. Um, but from that perspective too, it's been a good opportunity to connect with other agents, um, mm. knowing people up in the Ottawa Valley or up in North Bay 
um, it's been a really good way to connect with people like that. And I actually started sort of an auxiliary group um, called Ontario House Hunters, which is a private Facebook group for real estate agents that like to hunt and shoot. And uh, it, it's I started just around the start of COVID. But what I'd really like to do is kind of organize some networking events that are a little atypical yep. for real estate agents, maybe <laughs> involving firearms. Um, but I think I think it would be a lot of fun. That's awesome. So now, just, I want to I break down some, a few things in there because I think it's really important yeah. for the viewers to understand that, again, farming doesn't have to be just a specific neighborhood, doesn't have to be this pocket or this whatever. And I, I tell you just all the time that farming really is focusing your attention and effort on a subset of a community. Could be sure. a farming community, could be a neighborhood, it could be your database. And I think with you, you found a niche that was obviously untapped that was not served correctly. And like you said, there's obviously reasons why some people didn't jump in. Maybe it was the price point, maybe it was the, the space that was spread out, but you quickly found out that there wasn't obviously a lot of people doing that. So what was it that you found was the most, like what, what was your like first aha, like, hey, this is gonna work? Um, it's a good question. I think honestly, the, the growth of the group right off the bat without any real input from me, like yeah. I, it, for me, it was just, a, a convenience thing like here here's the 50 people i can post things in this group yeah. all the questions are going to be contained in sort of the same space and not filling up my inbox when i've got offer presentations and stuff to deal with on a regular yeah. basis i can kind of pick and choose when i address it so it doesn't get lost in the inbox but it's all kind of there and then the organic growth was was pretty wild um it was an interesting thing to see so then i kind of was like well you know maybe there's something here and i thought a little bit more into it and mm -hmm. it is it is a tough thing too like if you have a 200 acre property that someone wants to drive three hours to see they want to get out on that property and walk around right and look for deer sign or understand where the water sources are that's not something that your typical subdivision selling real estate <laughs> yeah. agent is particularly well equipped to do yeah. like i've I've got bear spray in my, in my Jeep. Like that's not, that's not standard procedure. Right. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, it was, so part of it was connecting with people that shared that passion, whether it's real estate agents, they're much more willing to take time or make time yeah. for that sort of thing if they're interested in it. Right. Exactly. So like a lot of the agents I've connected with, sure. It might be inconvenient to spend an hour or two walking a hundred acre property for that's worth $250,000. But if they enjoy spending time in the woods, yeah. they enjoy hunting, they enjoy talking about it. It's a lot easier to make time to do it. Exactly. That ties so, in exactly what I was going to ask you next is that how, how have you found the connections with the, the, the clients and the other agents on the other side? Because it is very unique. You have to know a lot of things that are important yeah. uh, and, and a piece of land for a hunter might be different or worth something different than someone who may want it for a co cottage or a cabin. So yeah. how have you found the difference between those kind of clients and what have you found has been important that you've had to learn? For sure. I think uh, the biggest thing I had to learn was that the reason why not a, all every agent wants to do it, right? Mm. Like, it, some of it's pretty obvious. Like I said, like the price point, the time involved, but at the same time too, like if you don't hunt or at least have a background knowledge, a lot of agents like if you look at some of the more rural areas like the Ottawa Valley or up in North Bay, even if they don't hunt, they have brothers, uncles, right? They've been around that sort of thing. They understand the mindset. They understand the process so they can speak to it. Right. But if you may like, for instance, there's lots of agents that have relocated. I think, I think you, you did, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, and during COVID specifically, a lot of those agents, moved further out someone that moved from toronto two years ago and maybe they live in north bay now they're not going to be able to walk through the bush and tell you anything relevant <laughs> to your to your hunting season right yeah um so yeah i think it was it was tough early on in a lot of cases i was trying to connect with listing agents and facilitate that sort of transition because they have a vested interest right they yep. have a reason to want to sell it so they were willing to make the time, but they didn't necessarily have the knowledge base that was important to these clients either. Right. So that was a bit of a, of a transition. And I think as it went on, it got easier to connect with, with agents that did have that passion, did have that knowledge. Um, and it made it, made it a lot easier. 
one of the things I, I teach all the time is the CPR. It's what I consider the foundation of farming. And it, again, ties in well with what you're doing is stands for community positioning and relationships. Obviously, yeah. the community, you know, it's the hunters who are looking for that. The positioning is what I want to dive into because how how – how do you package or how do you kind of take all that information, knowledge, experience, and how do you position yourself as an expert other than just posting the properties? Are you doing educational things? Are you doing marketing? Like, what are you doing to say, hey, I, I'm yeah. that person? Um, to be honest, I haven't done a lot. Okay. Um, I think there's there's lots of opportunities to do that. Um, I think it. I think because it was such an underserved niche, mm -hmm. like there's there's lots of agents that are like, targeting upsizers or targeting like a specific affluent community, say like South Pickering by the lake. There's, there's lots of people that focus on those types of areas. So to differentiate yourself is super important and show that you have expertise and show that you have something worth investing in. Yep. Um, but I didn't really find that super necessary in this situation, just by the fact that I was there and yep. the only person sharing that stuff. I, I kind of became the de facto guy to ask these questions. Um, yeah. And it's part of your branding too. And I know like the, the, the domain names and stuff you have, you tied yep. in. So you're positioning yourself before anyone even meets you. They know what it is you do and what it's about. And that For helps sure. create that. Yeah. And it's been kind of a weird bridge. Cause like, I would say I'm probably not your typical hunter. Like I grew up in the suburbs. Uh, I went to school in Toronto. I lived in Toronto for several years. Um, I would say my, my interests, and stuff are probably not going to fit in the same box that your average hunter does. Right. Um, but with real estate and my primary like, um, job in, in residential real estate is, is your typical suburban, semi-suburban home. Yeah. So it kind of meshes with my personal life, but not everybody from one side of that equation sees the other side and right and interacts really well so it's been i think it was an interesting exercise to kind of brand myself that way yeah but with it being hunt for homes it's it's kind of like on one side it's about house hunting like that's that's really the way i position it to to your resale clients but then it's also there that it speaks to the other side as well so they kind of get both sides of it but it's also kind of separate at the same time because there there is some crossover but not a ton. Like I would say I've done several uh, purchases for buyers connected through the outdoor industry that found me moving up towards Peterborough because it, we do have those types of properties in the vicinity yeah. um, and it's meshed well that way. Um, but yeah, like I still have a ton of clients where hunt, like I, I've got vegan clients. Yeah. They're, pro they're probably not probably not big on, on my extracurricular activities. Yeah. Um, but it's been, a, it's been an interesting balance to kind of keep both sides of that coin. Yeah. So what are you working on next to take it to the next level? What are you adding in or are you, are you kind of happy with where it's at? Um, I would like to do more with it because I am passionate about it. It is something I really enjoy. Um, I'm kind of at the point in my career, I think a lot of agents kind of get to this point. It's, it's just me. My wife works with me um, as my assistant and client care manager, but we're kind of at, I won't say maximum capacity, but like to the point where like any more than what we're already taking on is going to become unmanageable at some point. Yeah. Um, so we do want to grow the business. We want to expand and, and create opportunities for me to focus more on the marketing and advertising side that I really enjoy and dive into some of that niche stuff that um, we do a little bit deeper. And really there are opportunities there to grow it. Um, but I think it's always kind of been my focus to look at, like you said, the niche, the niche is so important. Mm. And uh, I'm a big fan of, I don't know if you know, Terry O'Reilly's podcast under the no. influence. I've heard so of it. I haven't, I haven't listened to it. Yeah, he, he was on CBC for a long time. And I had heard, even before I got into real estate, I had heard his podcasts on CBC radio and thought they were really interesting. He's uh, he's an ad executive. I guess, I don't know if he's still in advertising now, but he was an ad executive. He tells all kinds of stories about marketing campaigns and advertising from sort of the ad executive's mm. point of view and the problems and solutions that they come up with. I've always found it really interesting. And so much of that kind of shaped how I look at selling real estate. 
um, even when you're selling a house, like an ad is one thing to throw an ad on Facebook <laughs> and just like, all right, it's three bedrooms, two baths, big backyard, finished basement. There's your house, buy it. Yeah. But who, who's that ad targeted at, right? Who's your ideal buyer? Yeah. And I think looking at it as a more holistic approach of, okay, if you're selling a semi in Oshawa, you're probably looking at a, a young family or a young couple looking to have a family. Yeah. It should shape not just your marketing, your advertising copy, and, but also like when you're staging it. Do you stage that third bedroom as another bedroom or do you put a nursery in it? Right. Like all of these things kind of need to, you always have to have the end user in mind and what their pains and problems are and how the property solves it. Anybody can turn MLS statistics into a write-up. That doesn't make good advertising or good marketing. <laughs> exactly. Right. And I think, don't get me wrong. I fall into that trap too, especially with subdivision houses. It can be challenging sometimes. Um, but I really learned from listening to all his stories on his podcast. And he has, some, he has a couple of good books to that tell really good stories about the marketing and advertising industry that I always find interesting. Yeah. Um, but it really, I hardly listen to one of his podcasts without leaving it and be like, that makes a lot of sense. I can apply this to my business. And like, they're about fast food and like totally unrelated things. But I always find that um when you're looking at lessons from other industries it's it's a lot easier to take tidbits of knowledge and apply that to your business there's yeah. tons of good books and podcasts out there about real estate but they're all looking at it from the perspective of real estate and like we're all in this business we see it from our perspective too sometimes it's there's more to be gained from an outside perspective 100%. Yeah. bringing something new to the business. I, I remember uh, a friend of mine had a house to sell in Orno, which is like in Northern Durham, uh, maybe four years ago now. And she came to me and she said, look, like I've got this great house. Um, it's, she's an interior designer. So inside it's fantastic, it's beautiful, huge, high ceilings. It used to be like the town hall. So it's almost like a church inside. It's mm, fantastic. Wow. But they're out in the country there's no garage there's no lot like literally the fence is like four feet from the back of the house yeah um it doesn't have any of the like things that people move to the country for like everybody wants the big acre property big detached garage or workshop yeah those are the things that people move to the country for and she's like i really need a creative solution because we spent a ton of money renovating it and we want to find the perfect buyer, but it's not the perfect country house. So we came up with a plan to make a, a listing video. And it, at the time, it, it was just kind of, it, listing videos weren't super popular five years ago. Yeah. The lifestyle video was still a pretty new idea. And we made a video highlighting the town of Tyrone, um, the local, orchard and winery and the and Tyrone Mill and the farmer's market. And it wasn't really about the house. It was about the lifestyle of exactly. moving to the country. Yeah. That's what you're selling. Right. So I had a couple of people in my office that like stopped me and were like, like, how much did you spend on this video? Like it, it's like it's not even about the house. I'm like, no, it's not about the house. <laughs> yeah. That was never it was never supposed to be about the house. Yeah. Um, people thought I was crazy to spend five thousand dollars on a, a lifestyle video five years ago. And it's been the it was the best thing I ever did. Mm. I've got referrals from Vancouver specifically because they saw that video. Wow. So, but again, it was it was about understanding who the buyer was, what they were looking for. And showing them that maybe the house wasn't perfect for them. Maybe they would have preferred a garage, but like that, I think we had like a million and a half views on Facebook. Wow. And That's crazy. Like, I had launched the video and then gone away camping for the weekend. <laughs> and like, I turned my phone on. I was like, Oh, what's, what's happening. <laughs> it was crazy. like, it was a little overwhelming. Um, but I think I heard, I don't if you know, Jess Lenovo, Yep. yep. Um, Had her on two times on the show. She's oh awesome. yeah. She's great. Um, so 
I, I read her book recently and it really resonated with me. And I heard her say something one time that was, you're not selling the airplane, you're selling the destination. Mm-hmm. And that really, like, that made a lot of sense to me because that's kind of the way I'd always thought, but I'd never heard anyone say it like that. Mm. Um, and I, to be honest, I think that's the biggest thing that I learned by listening to all those podcasts about marketing and advertising. That's what it's about. Anyone can can show you a three bedroom, two bath house in Whitby. There's yeah. tons of them. But how do you differentiate your product from somebody else? And obviously in that situation, having a unique product to sell helps. Yes. But it's the same thing. You're selling the destination. You're not you're not selling the fact that it has three bedrooms and two baths because that's what everybody has. Exactly. And so that ties was, in with the, the the hunting stuff is that you're selling the lifestyle. You're selling the ultimate goal of them hunting. It's not just sure. the land itself. It's what they're going to get, the enjoyment they're going to get of it. And that that changes what they're looking for or why and, and how you position yourself. And I think yeah. it's important that for agents to see that, whether it's hunting, whether it's equestrian farms, whether it's whatever it is that they're, they're yeah. into, you're selling that whole lifestyle. And that's that's the bigger, the bigger piece of it. And I want to ask you about the competition because obviously yeah. you, you took off. You've had a lot of growth with that. I'm sure you've had people getting eyeballs on it and seeing, have you had anyone kind of try to creep into that space or have you kind of? Um, not really enough that I've noticed. <laughs> no, good. good. Um, like there's, there's other people out there, like, especially in, like, I'm not in a, a super rural market. Like mm-hmm. there are those types of properties around, but like, if you look at, I, I used to hunt in the Ottawa Valley a lot there's some fantastic hunting out there. There's tons of properties to choose from that have good hunting, have acreage. There's, there's agents out there that sell those properties regularly, Yeah. but I don't know that there's really anyone sort of packaging them themselves that way. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting though. Like I had uh, a couple of years back, um, I had someone reach out, they were building an app that was basically like Airbnb for hunting properties. Nice. Uh, super cool idea hunting isn't really big business in canada like Mm -hmm. it is in the u.s there's lots of outfitters and guides around it's a business but in the states it's huge like there's whole brokerages built around selling hunting properties like the mossy oak properties uh, mossy oak is a big hunting apparel Mm -hmm. brand they have their own brokerage in the states (laughs) wow like it's it's massive yeah um so that's not really the case here, but there are opportunities. It, it's a smaller market. It's a niche market, but it exists. So they had approached me the same way. They're like, really, you're the only person that we've seen or heard of doing this. Like, this is kind of our, our idea. Um, the app was called land pass. It's still around. Um, they're kind of working on smoothing out the, the kinks and getting it like fully operational. And, uh, Bob Azumi, the Canadian nice. fishing guy, he, he was involved in it That's awesome. as well. So like we had a couple of really cool chats and, and Zoom calls, kind of brainstorming ideas and that sort of thing. And it, it's the same thing. Like just like consumers recognize you for that, it, yeah. other people in the industry reaching out and making connections um, always helps. But I do think there's, there's opportunity for growth there, whether it's from me or even from somebody else. Yeah. Um, even though it's not as big as it is in the U S there's still a market there to be tapped into. And there's opportunities if, if you have the time to, to work exactly. them and, and provide. And you're not trying to be the Canada hunting guy. So you're doing your area and <laughs> someone could be doing it in their area and wherever sure. they are. I mean, it's North America is a pretty big area and there's a lot of, it is. A lot of people hunting in, in all those areas. So, yeah. And I, I just got back from, from Alberta. So I think there's plenty of opportunities out West for mm-hmm. that type of thing. It's, I would say it's even bigger than it is in Ontario yeah. in Alberta and BC, but there's definitely opportunities. That's awesome. So if you were to give our viewers one last piece of advice, whether they're trying to get in their own niche or something like yours, what, what advice would you give? Uh, I, I think just the pa- honestly, the power of the niche and understanding who your audience is. I think that's been the biggest thing that's shaped my career, knowing who you're speaking to, mm-hmm. knowing who is going to buy the product that you're selling always makes for more effective marketing and advertising, whether it's trying to sell yourself as an agent or trying to sell a home as a product that's that's more important than anything else in this business and i think it's something that gets overlooked a lot yeah that's totally true that's awesome and if you were to recommend one last book we have a last book or best book segment what's one book that you would recommend that's had an impact on your life or you think would have an impact on our viewers 
Um, yeah, to be honest, this might be, a, I, li- I listen to a lot of audiobooks in the car as agents. We spend a lot, a yeah, lot of time exactly. in our cars. Um, so maybe this is a little bit of recency bias. I, I, any of the big real estate books, I've, I've listened to them at some point. Um, but I really liked Jess Lenovo's book. Mm. Um, I read it recently. I had to actually read it, which was a, quite the departure for me because it's not <laughs> an audio book yet. Yeah. Um, but I, I actually, I read it in the Turkey woods this spring. <laughs> Nice. That's awesome. Sitting in the woods, reading it on uh, on my tablet. Um, I it's not so much the book itself. There's lots of good information in the book about growing your business. Um, it's called More Money, Less Hustle, yep. or no, Less Hustle, more, Less Hustle, or, More or, Money. Or, yeah. There you go. That's right. Yeah, one or the other. And uh, there's lots of good tidbits about growing your business and expansion and how to create a work life balance, which there's, there's that stuff in a lot of other books too. The biggest thing for me was like we're talking about with your niche and knowing who your consumer is. The first part of that book was all about her pains and experiences growing her business and how it was affecting her relationships. And, and then it was about identifying niches and speaking mm-hmm. to them. That's what her program is about. Right. Yeah. Which full disclosure, I'm a member of her program. Nice. Um, but I read that. And knowing what her program is about, I'm like, this is a brilliant piece of marketing. She knows me. She knows my <laughs> pains. Yeah. And she's speaking directly to me. So all the other real estate stuff is great. But it was really like an aha moment thinking about like, I'm like, this is kind of brilliant. But this is what she's talking about, too. Yeah. So it was, it was an interesting moment. There's lots of good advice in the book. But that was really the thing that caught me is she's identified her niche. I'm her niche. She's speaking to my pains and experiences. And it, it really connected all the dots for me. I thought it was really interesting. Yeah, you see it play out in real life through her own. And that's what, totally. I, love, what I love about her is she practices what she preaches. She yes. doesn't, she's not just out there saying to do this and do that. And she's not doing it herself. And I said, yes. she's been on twice. I've only had two guests on twice. And she was one. Yeah. When she launched the book. We had her on and it was awesome. And she's phenomenal. Great book. Yeah. Great, great resource. She's got a ton of great information. So that's awesome. So yeah. we'll put that in the show notes so people can check it out. For and sure. how can our viewers check out what you're up to, connect with you and find out more? Yeah. So I have uh I have uh, the Facebook group, Southern Ontario Hunting Properties. Um, So if you're interested in hunting properties, that's there to be had. Uh, There's lots of people it's easy to find. Um, I also have a Facebook page, um, Hunt for Homes with Jordan Matchett, and a website, huntforhomes.ca. So pretty easy to find. And uh, whether it's houses or hunting properties, I'm always happy to talk about it. And uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting niche, that's for sure. Awesome. I, I, that's why I want to have you on because I think it's it's cool to show that you can really find something that you're passionate about and that you enjoy and connect with others and have that success based on just that simple thing that you're, you're passionate about and create an opportunity for you that you probably never would have thought about if you if you didn't jump in. So that's for awesome. Sure. We'll put that in the show notes so people can check out, uh, connect with you. Jordan, thank you for being on the show. I really appreciate you sharing your insights, experience, and wisdom. And thank you for bringing your passion to the world and, and helping others find their passion and help them find their place as well. My pleasure, Ryan. I really appreciate you having me on. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thanks for checking out today's episode. If you'd like more videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our Facebook page and our other social media channels. Looking forward to bringing you more great content like this and happy farming.